Welcome back, everybody. We're in part two, the sea and the sky, or the sky and the sea. And this is the image that we're going to be painting this section of in just a second. So let me get to this piece. Let me show you a few of my little thumbnails I did before just to give you an idea and I'm going to zoom in on here. So I'm going to go kind of quickly on some of these. Just gives you an idea and we're going to paint this in just a second but much larger. This is one technique in the sky and you'll see my technique when we paint just showing you what you can do with some clouds water and I put a little sailboat in there so you can see exactly a scale of some sort. Here is another. Did you see that? Those clouds? Here is another just windswept. It doesn't mean these are what you have to paint. This is just an idea. Take a look at some cloud photographs uh, to see the cumulus clouds and the other clouds and you can see which ones you want. And you can take this to a different degree, a little more overcast, so a little deeper and darker in the water. And finally, this particular one, just a windswept, just swooping down. And you can do this so easy uh, with the side of your brush. But this has got to be a little bit damp through here. And you start with dark colors. You'll see. Come on down. Okay, that's just a, a general idea of what we're going to be doing. Let me zoom back out just a second. And I want to show you, zoom back out just a hair more. Okay, you can see my palette as well. This photograph, and I have this photograph here for just a reason, particular reason to call your attention to. You're here. You're where I am in front of the picture. When you look up, you see these big old clouds. And as they go further away from you, they get a little smaller and a little smaller and a little smaller. And they're not as bright. They just fade away to where they're cooler, less detail back in the background. Well, what it appears to be is that they're coming down closer to the earth. Well, that's not true. This is atmospheric perspective. Let me show you what's actually happening in this situation. Okay, <laughs> isn't this cute? You're standing here. That's you. This is the Earth. And what you think is going on is you look up at these giant clouds, and as you go away, the clouds get closer to the Earth. And that's what this photograph makes it look like, gets closer to the earth. Well, that's not what's happening. The truth of the matter is those clouds, no matter how far, are all about the same, generally now I'm speaking, the same distance from the earth, no matter where they are. Now, they'll have some low-slung clouds, but for general purposes. So what are you actually seeing? Well, this is what you're actually seeing. This is a earth and these are the big clouds that you saw right above your head and these are the rest of the clouds but if you look the distance from the cloud to the earth and the distance from the cloud to the earth are the same but as you look out they're peering away from you and they appear to be smaller but they're the same size as here so this is the atmospheric perspective I was speaking about well what we're going to paint right now is this section of the sky and the sea uh, so that you can see at least one of the techniques that I use to create a sky. You saw just a minute ago on some of those little uh, mini pieces that uh, there's so many ways that you can paint the sky. It's just unbelievable what you can do. Now, here we go. This is a mock-up and what I've done is I've put little shack in and the sky I'm going to paint today is going to be a little bit of a swept sky. I'm using the sky to draw attention to the shack. I'm going to move the sky in this direction and that's going to be a little bit similar to this sky but it's going to swoop down just a little bit more. Okay and the water will be 
somewhat similar, but we'll make that work. Here we go. I'm going to get a larger mop brush, or this is a quill brush. It's one that's particularly Da Vinci. It happens to be a number two. I'm going to go right up here, and I'm going to get a little water right through up in here and just let it kind of get wet for just a second. Now I'm going to turn it around because my table is at a slope and that slope is about I'll say 20 degrees so when I put water on here it's going to run down. So I'm going to turn mine upside down. I'm going to come back in at the horizon line of where I think the water is would be maybe somewhere up in here and I'm just going to add some more water at this particular point right along the edge of there. Now why am I doing that? Because I want to be able to use a lighter uh, uh, color right at the horizon line and I'm going to now go in and take a touch of yellow ochre and I'm going to come in at that horizon line, just go straight across, right through here, and just kind of fade it down. Let's let it run just ahead. Now, I didn't put a lot of heavy pigment on here, but that's okay. And I know it's a little difficult for you to see. And maybe if I just come down even a little bit more, it might help a little bit. Now you can see the yellow a little bit better the yellow ochre that I used here. Let's turn it back around. Now this is now my horizon. Now you can see it's sort of a glow. I'm going to go in to my palette and I'm going to get some cobalt blue. I'm going to wet it up a pretty good bit. Get a good bit of cobalt blue. I know you can't see the palette completely. You can see me doing the mix, but it's just a ton of cobalt blue. Just put it in there, wash my brush off, and again, come down about halfway in the sky and put some more water down in here because that's where it's going to start loosening up. But up at the top, I want deep color. So here we go. Can you see that okay? Or do I have my have it down just a little too far? Come down to the top of the cabin there. Okay, nice and simple. Now let me come out of here just a little bit. Now you can see it a little bit better, I think. Okay, now I'm just going to keep that sweep going, and I'm getting lighter as I get down to the bottom of the water. A little bit. Remember now, watercolor is going to dry about 30% for the most part lighter than what you apply it looks like. Okay, and I'm just coming across with just a few little strips and you can see them. Remember what you saw, the clouds get smaller and lighter as they appear in the background like they're receding away. Now, as I look at this, I think I could put a little bit more touch of blue right through here. A little bit more coming down from the top. So all I'm doing now is I just wash my brush. It's still very damp. So what I did is I created a directional grouping here. Now as you can see it, it's all directional towards the cam. Get your eye back into that area. Okay, 
Let's go down to the water while this is drying. All right, I'm going to do a similar thing there. I'm going to plain water, just plain water, and these quill brushes hold a lot of liquid, so you can really pretty much get the water you need on here and enough of it to where you don't need to dip your water. And I'm going to stop writing your brush back in the water very much. Now, I'm not going to use a quill brush here. I'm going to a number 10 round brush. Uh, this one happens to be a Robert Simmons Sapphire. And I love his brushes. They're really good. I'm going to get some of my Thalo Blue. Now, another <clears throat> caution to you. Very careful with Thalo Blue. Very careful. That's why I'm mixing it real, real light to start with. And I'm just going to make a quick pass right here and right here to the edge of where that little column looks. Now I'm going to flatten my brush out a little bit. I'm going to be painting almost with the bottom of this brush. Just come on in. Just want to get a little pigment there. Some of it may creep up on the sand. Let's move it out the way. Now this was barely wet, but I'm just coming in with a little bit of the water right there. Now since this is shallower than this, I'm going to add a little bit red iron oxide, which if you don't have it, use <coughs> a little burnt sienna. So now I'm getting some of that sand look mixed in with the blue. And I'm going to zoom in on this in a second so you can see a little bit more of how this looks. Now I'm doing wet on dry because I'm getting a lot of skips. You can see that here. And that's what I'm looking for. Because I can come back in with this brush and get a few more little brown pieces up in here. All right, now that's great. Clean my brush off real good. Get a clean piece of paper towel. I'm going to get a little bit more of my Thalo Blue. Just get it out there all by itself. I'm going to make another little pile where I had my cobalt blue and I'm going to go and get some Viridian which is a cool green I'm going to take a little bit of that phthalo and put in there with it a little bit more water and get it kind of soupy you can see that right in here on the side Clean my brush off again. Now I'll come back in and get some of that super color. And I'll just go straight across. Start coming in towards the water inside. And here is where it gets a little <coughs> sticky so that you'll have to be very careful with what you do with phthalo. This needs to dry just a little bit. I'm going to get a smaller brush. This is a number six. You could use a number eight. It's a number six or number eight round. Whatever your favorite round brush is. And I'm going in, you can see to the right, I'm getting some more of that phthalo blue. And I'm just coming down this way. Why am I darkening it out there? Now I just wiped all the pigment off my brush. And I'm just randomly kind of moving it around a little bit. I'm making it darker because the general theory is that the further offshore you go, the deeper it gets, so the less reflection you can have with light hitting through the water, like it is here when it goes through the water, hits the sand, the sand reflects up. So since it can't do that, it's like a mirror reflection of deep. 
and there it is. Now this is still damp. All of this is still damp. So at this point, you just want to kind of move the pigment around. I just clean my brush. Okay. And I'm just moving the pigment that's on the paper around with the side of my brush under here. And I know it's a little light for you to see, but that's okay. We'll zoom in in just a second and you'll be able to see exactly what's happening. And you didn't see me put any more pigment on my brush, but I'm just moving this around. I've got a little bit of it on because of what I did out there. Now I'm going to wash my brush really good. And I'm going to clean it. And I'm going to dry it. And this is a way to dry it. You want to pull your paper from the ferrule out so that you don't pull all the fibers this way and break them. So now my brush is pretty dry. Now I'm going to pull this way. I'm going to pull same general direction I did when I dried my brush off. And I'm going to roll it. Actually, it's dried a little too much, but you can see some of what I'm doing. I clean my brush off again. I'm going to get a flat brush. This is a little half inch flat brush. I'm going to wet it very good, make sure it's clean. I'm going to dry it off a little bit. It's still damp. And I'm going to come up here and lift some color out of here. And for you to be able to see exactly what I'm doing, let me dampen that outside area with a little more deeper, darker color. I'm going to take my phthalo blue and I'm going to mix some of my brown iron oxide into it. And if you don't have brown iron oxide, you want to use your burn umber. Okay, and this is basically what we're going to get a color in that range. Okay. So I'm deepening that up just a little bit. And I'm going just going straight across one swoop. I'll catch this part in a second. I just wash my brush off. And I'm just moving that dark pigment down just a hair. So that is now giving me a darker horizon for you to see right in this location. Let's go take it up from the other side. Just boop. Now you see I'm not painting with the point of my brush. I'm painting with the side of my brush. I'm a blender. I like blending watercolor. And it's a, a little bit different approach in oils and acrylics where brush strokes do make a big difference. And they make a difference also in watercolor, but a lot more difficult to see. I put a little bit more viridian in this area so that you could see it. It's a little darker, gives you a better idea because I, I know I need to darken up what I paint so that you can see it better on camera. So right through there and it'll get lighter and lighter as it gets to where there's just pure sand back up in here. So now you can see it's almost like a graded wash coming down in this area. So I'm going to take a little bit more phthalo, clean my brush, and a little bit more of my transparent brown iron oxide. Just a little bit darker color here. Let's take a look at this and see the difference from this one. Quite a bit of difference. A deep, deep value. And I'm just coming right here and right on top and I'm going to just fan it out to nothing. So here we go. 
I'm just going to get this. And I'm not going to put it everywhere. Now, I'm just moving pigment around, guys. Just basically moving pigment around. Now, you can make this horizon as dark as you want. You can make it any color you want. You can use ultramarine blue. You can mix that ultramarine blue with a little orange right here. And you can create a real deep blue with it because you're using the complement. Be careful if you use an equal amount, you're going to get pure mud. So you want to be careful and test it. Make sure you have a spare piece of paper adjacent to you so you can test your color mixing. Okay, we'll let that dry for just a second, and we'll move back up in the sky in just a minute. But let's go down in here, and I'm going to take some of that deep, dark mix, put it on the side, make another little puddle right in here. And I'm going to put a little bit yellow ochre into that mix, and a little bit, again, of my brown oxide, or in your case, if you don't have that, a little bit burn number and I'm going to just make a little indentation in here. Yeah, that does look dark, doesn't it? There it is. Okay, I just washed my brush off. It's still damp. And I know you know that I wasn't just going to leave this this way. I'm just deepening it up. See where the shadow line is on the building? So the light source. You always have to have a light source. And I'm just project, projecting this out like that. That also helps it look like that gives depth, makes it look like this is going to be curving, that the sand's higher here than here. <clears throat> Similar case here. Let's get it out to that edge. You don't want to just strike a line and say, okay, that's my shadow line. You want to be able to feather it into this water just a little bit. Now, what I did is I put my brush just now back in the water, and I got more water. You could see where it went in here. I'm going to take some more of my viridian, and I'm going to get that viridian across there. so that you can see it a little bit better. A little bit more yellow ochre. And that's what it does. Okay, so just move that pigment around a little bit. Might even deepen this just a hair. Okay, now that gives it a little bit depth. Now that's basically, basically what it's all you need, really, if you want this kind of sky. I'm going to come back in with a little bit more of my cobalt blue. Wash my brush off. I don't want it too dark. I'm going to mix just a hair of my viridian in there with it. And I'm going to go back in, and I'm going to just tint these clouds just a little bit. And I'm doing that so you could see the depth that that's going to create. Now, I'm blotting it a little bit with my other great tool, paper towel. And I'm going to come in here and I'm going to get a little more color with some of the clouds. And I just clean my brush off. And all I'm doing is moving some of that pigment around so that it's not deeper, darker than here. This is a value change. Don't want it any darker than this, but I do want it a little bit darker for you to be able to see it so that you can see what is happening up in here. And remember now, clouds are soft. Clouds are nice and like an old pillow. So how should you treat them? Treat them like an old pillow. 
it's tough for you to see but if I put it any darker it's gonna really change the value of what I have here so I'll throw a little bit more right up in here where you can see it and how much is enough well let your eye tell you okay I'm just gonna leave it at that you can come in and add birds you can put boats in the water but this is basically how you get this kind of sky and sea with one exception I'm going to show you with the flat brush now how you can make an addition of some waves through it and I'll wash your brush off every time you go back into the pigment take your paper towel you can see these waves starting to happen clean my brush off There's some more. Dab it with the paper towel. If you want it whiter, you can go back in after you wash your brush out and just do all kinds of lifting through there. That's much lighter. Let's get some in a shallower area here. And maybe right next to the shoreline. Now, there are a lot of ways you can do this. One is, while it's still wet, is you can use a, a knife or a credit card or anything that's got a hard edge to it where you can scrape along the edge. That's another possible way of doing it. And uh, I will be doing a video on that particular technique. But you can see the general technique at the uh, Florida Watercolor Society site. I did one for the virtual convention that is taking place. So I'm just showing you some possibilities of what else you can do. Uh, you can rub your brush. I'm going up and down with it. And by doing that, you're going to get a little bit more of a, a look on the bottom and the top of where the wave is okay and the last thing I'm going to show you as to what you can do as well to come back and accent that is go back get a little bit of a mixture of cobalt and a thalo that's darker than the darkest part in this area and just come back in and get a little don't strike a big line across there just here and there want it too dark use your paper towel and get it like you'd like to have it now I'm going to lift this up so you can see a little bit better how that darkening area now watch in this section right here I'm going to get a little bit more of the thalo mix with that and I'm going to just kind of take the point of my brush see that area right in here Let my brush dry it off real good. Take some of that moisture out of there. So you can start getting lights and darks. You should wait until your lifting process dries more. I am rushing the brush. I am going against one of my major statements and that's don't rush the brush. So anyway, that's one of the techniques 
that we use for sky. And if you need this darker, just come back in now that it's, it's dry. If you want to add color, same thing. If you want to put a little streak in here of alizarin crimson or make it a stormy sky and darken back in here, you're welcome to do so. But I think this sky fits this particular image a little better. And what I just did was create the sky to kind of give direction right up in this location. Okay, that's it, everybody. Thank you once again for joining us, and stay tuned because in uh, just a few days, uh, you're going to see part two, which is going to be the shack. Okay, that's the wooden shack. We're going to do a similar kind of thing with the wooden shack. Take care, be safe, and we'll see you in the next video.